What's up guys, Eric Vasquez here with a brand new tutorial for you today from designcuts.com. In this tutorial we'll be creating some fun custom branded packaging for a coffee shop called Wired Cafe using a combination of Illustrator and Photoshop. To do this we will first develop our logo in Adobe Illustrator using some handy tips and tricks along with one style of the Tompkin typeface from Type Sketchbook, which is just one of many styles and weights you'll find in the complete eclectic font collection. This all new collection is bursting at the seams with serifs, sans serifs, script and slab fonts you can use to create everything from branding and poster designs to logos, social posts and much more. Once we have crafted our logo, we'll be bringing it into Photoshop and placing it into some realistic packaging mockups from the essential packaging and branding mockup from Mockup Zone to bring it all together. By harnessing the power of Illustrator and Photoshop, you will see just how quickly and easily you can take your designs and turn them into a cohesive identity for a brand that is both iconic and professional looking. So if you're all ready to get wired, then grab a fresh cup of coffee and let's get started. Now to begin, we're going to be working in Adobe Illustrator, and we're just going to go ahead and create a new document here. We just need to set up a few things first. So let me go ahead and give my document a name. I'm just going to call this Wired Cafe logo design. And then here we have a width of five inches and a height of five inches. And let's just go ahead and change the artboards. We probably only need one artboard. And then go ahead and click create. Now once we've set up our new document, let's start off by pressing P on the keyboard to switch to the pen tool. Now by default, you'll probably have a white fill and a black stroke selected. So let's just go ahead and choose none for the fill so that all we're left with is this black stroke color. Now I'm going to come over here towards the bottom left, click to make a point, hold the shift key, and then click somewhere over here on the right side just to continue that point and create a straight line. Now once you've done that, you can press Command, Shift, and A on the keyboard to deselect all. And then what we're going to do is come to the window menu, open the stroke panel, and now let's go ahead and just select that line again. Come to this little hamburger menu up here on the upper right and choose Show Options. Now for the weight, we're going to go ahead and change this to 18, and then we're going to click in the center here where it says rounded cap, or round cap, and round join. All right, so we now have a thick black line just with a more of a rounded cap on the start and the end points, just like that. So now let's press P again, and this time we're going to maybe create a point somewhere towards the left side of the path over here. Then move your cursor slightly up and to the left, and then what we're going to do is click and drag upwards so that we create this nice curved path. All right, something like that looks pretty good. And now what we want to do is click on this point because you can see as I continue to move my pen around, it's going to give us a little preview of where the next line would go if I were to just click like that. So instead, what we want to do is click on this point to reset it. All right, so now all we need to do is hold the shift key and we can just come straight up from that last point. Now hold the shift key again and click somewhere over here so that you have a little bit of a, a 90 degree angle in the upper left corner. Now press V on the keyboard to grab your move tool and you now have sort of the left side of a cup. Now from here what we want to do is select just this top part, press command control C to copy it and then command control F to paste the copy on top. Now with that top copy still selected, come up to the object menu and choose transform, reflect, and check off the vertical option and go ahead and check off the preview box too so that you can see what it's going to do. It's basically just going to create a symmetrical mirror image of that first piece. So now we can simply click on it, hold the shift key and slide it over to the opposite side. All right, so you kind of have something like that, but I'm going to move these a little bit closer together here. And now we just need to sort of join these two points. So all we need to do is press A to get the direct selection tool click and drag around this last point here, hold the shift key and tap the right arrow a few times just to connect that line on the top. All right, so you now have sort of the base for your cup. And if you wanna make it a little taller, you can click and drag around this entire top line here and then just tap the up arrow a few times just to make the mug a little bit taller. Again, press P to get back to the pen tool and I'm just gonna use the space bar and then click and drag around to sort of um, maneuver around the document a little bit. And now we're just going to create our handle on the right side here. So I'm going to click somewhere over here towards the bottom right side, come up to the upper right a little bit, click and drag to create a nice curve like this. Okay, and now all we're going to do is come over here 
and join that shape with the top of the cup. All right, so you end up with something like this. And now we can grab that shape, press V to get the regular selection tool, click and drag around it, and maybe let's just extend it a little bit further like that. Okay, now go ahead and press L on the keyboard, and that's going to give you this ellipse tool. And then at the moment we have a solid black stroke. So what we need to do is actually change that to a black fill. All you're gonna to do to do that is hold shift and tap X on the keyboard. So that's gonna to toggle between the fill and the stroke color. So make sure you have a solid black fill. Click and drag outwards while holding the shift key to create a small black circle, okay? And we wanna place it about there just so that it you know, rounds a little bit where the top of the handle joins the cup. Okay, something like that looks pretty good. And now I'm gonna press A again to get my direct selection tool. Click on this point in the upper left, and then also drag around these points in the upper right. And I'm just gonna tap it up a little bit to make it a bit taller. But you can see we actually missed one of these points here. So just select that individual point and tap up on the keyboard a few times so that you're left with this. All right, now let's also go ahead and click and drag around this bottom point here. And I want it to be about the width of the handle. So you can see where the handle ends I just want that base to come out about the same length. Okay, so all we're gonna do is just select both of these endpoints and make them a little bit longer. Okay, and if you wanna make sure that everything is like even, you know, the, the length is even, press M to get the rectangle tool, then Shift and X to change it to a fill color, and you can now sort of see where this lines up. Okay, so I'm just gonna make this go to the edge of the cup on this side, and then I'm gonna hold Shift and the Alt Option key and just drag it to the opposite side to make sure that we have the same distance on both sides. And you can tell right away that the right side is a little bit longer. So let's just bring that in. Then we can get rid of both of these boxes and just delete them. Okay, so we now have our cup basically created here. And what we're gonna do now is press V and click and drag around the entire shape, come up to the object menu and choose Expand. Now we wanna make sure that both Fill and Stroke are checked off and then click OK. And what that's going to do is convert everything that was previously in line into a solid filled shape. So you can no longer change the line weight now that we've expanded it. But what we can do now that we have all of these separate shapes is come up to the window menu and we're gonna go ahead and grab the Pathfinder tool. And now what we wanna do is choose the Merge option, which is the third one from the left on the bottom row. And that's going to merge all of these together into a single solid black shape. Now I'll just move the Pathfinder to the side Press L again to go back to the ellipse tool. And now let's click drag out while holding the shift key to create a fairly large circle just above the center of the cup here. And we just wanna make sure that it's sort of centered with the top of the cup, not including the handle. All right, so press Command, Control, Shift and A to deselect all. Press M to get the rectangle tool. And I'm just gonna click and drag out a rectangle that's about the same width as the top of the mug here. Okay, and now I can select the circle, hold shift and select that rectangle, and then come over here to the align tools and choose horizontal align center. All right, so we are pretty much on the money there. Everything is nice and centered. Okay, now select the circle, press command control C to copy it, command control F to paste it in front, and now drag outwards from any of the four corners of the bounding box while holding the alt option and shift keys, and then press shift and X to change it from a fill to a stroke. Now again, over here in the stroke panel, let's change the weight now from one point to 50. So we get this thick black line like that. Okay, and then we're going to zoom out a little bit. Press Command Control C, then Command Control F. Click and drag outwards from any of the four corners while holding Alt Option and Shift to now go ahead and create a second copy. Okay, so you now have basically a bullseye. You've got this circle in the middle and two black strokes on the outside both with a weight of 50. Now, select the first line on the outside, hold shift and select the next one in, come back up to the object menu and choose expand once again to convert these from strokes into solid shapes. And now return to the pathfinder and choose merge once again to merge those two shapes into one solid. Okay, and it's okay, we do want this to be separate from that circle in the middle there. But while we're at it, let's go ahead and select all of these shapes and we're just gonna go ahead and click on the fill color here. Right now it's showing up as a question mark. And let's just go ahead and make it like a red color. And you can see what happened there. It filled everything with red, but you can still see where the gaps should be. Okay, so what we're gonna do is deselect again, Command, Control, Shift, and A on the keyboard. 
press A to get the direct selection tool, and click on this gap inside that we want to get rid of, and then delete it. All right, and I'll come back in again, select this gap here, and delete it. So now you should just have a solid red color showing up. From here, let's press M on the keyboard to switch back to the rectangle tool. And I'm just going to draw out a tall, uh, fairly wide rectangle, somewhere about there looks good. Press D on the keyboard to reset your default colors, then Shift and X to set the foreground color to black. Press X to bring the stroke color to the front, and then choose None. Okay, so we now just have a solid black box. And all the way over here in the Properties panel, uh, hopefully you guys have this. I'm just working off of the uh, default workspace here, the Essentials workspace. But if you guys don't see the Properties panel, it can be found under the Window menu here. Okay, and all we're going to do is come into this Angle option and change it to a value of 45. 45. All right. All right, and now what we're looking to do is to click, hold the Shift key, and kind of slide this over to the right a little bit. And now press Command Control C, Command Control F to copy and then paste in front. Come back up to the Object menu and choose Transform Reflect once again. Make sure Vertical is selected and click OK. And now with your Selection tool, V on the keyboard, just click, hold the Shift key, slide this copy over to the opposite side, and get a nice, even, symmetrical box on each side. All right, now we're going to select one box, hold Shift and select the other one, return to the Pathfinder and choose Merge. So we now have these two red lines, right, these bold shapes back here, they're not lines anymore, which are merged, and we also have this kind of V-shape here with these two merged black boxes. So now what we can do is select the boxes, hold the Shift key, and select the lines, and choose Merge once again from the keyboard. All right, and now what we're going to do is deselect, Command Control Shift A, press A to get the direct selection tool, and click anywhere on these black boxes, and then press Delete. All right, so you're now left with this uh, symbol here that closely resembles a Wi-Fi signal. All right, and now what we're going to do is zoom in a little bit, press A on the keyboard to get your direct selection tool, hold shift and select the second shape here, so you have both of these uh, chopped off shapes selected, and you should see these small white circles just on the inside of both of these shapes, and you can see when you hover over them it changes to a curve. So all we're going to do here is click and drag inwards to round all of those corners. All right, and now that's looking much more like a Wi-Fi symbol. All right, and that's also the reason why we changed this to red, because if this was black when we tried to merge it with those black boxes that we had on top, uh, this wouldn't have knocked the shape out correctly. All right, and you can see here there's actually a couple of empty shapes left, so I'm just using the direct selection tool to grab those and delete them. And be careful not to select any of the red while doing this, so zoom in if you have to, and just make sure that you grab any of those sort of empty shapes that may be left behind, but I think it's only those two. Now select this red shape on top here, press I to sample the black from the cup, and you should now have just one solid black shape. So let's go ahead and select all of that, come back to the Pathfinder again, and choose Merge. And there you go, we now have our Wi-Fi symbol just on top of the coffee mug like that. All right, so I'm selecting it, clicking and dragging inwards while holding down the Shift key just to make it smaller and scale it down a little bit. And if you want to, you can also hold down Alt-Option while doing that to scale it from the center. So if you're holding Alt-Option and Shift, it'll scale it proportionally from the middle. If you're just holding Shift, it'll go from whichever corner you're dragging in or outwards from. Now from here, press T on the keyboard to switch over to the Type tool. Go ahead and click your cursor uh, somewhere below the coffee mug. And we're going to type out the word WIRED in all caps. Now press command Control a to select the entire line. And over here we have the character panel, so let me just bring that out for a moment. And if you guys don't have that, you can also just get it by coming up to the window menu again and coming down here to where it says type, character. All right, so now we have that floating panel, so that's even better. Now for the typeface, we're going to go ahead and change this to Tomkin Narrow Regular. And this typeface is in the freebies folder for this tutorial. And as I mentioned at the top, it is just one of many styles and weights of this font that you guys will get access to in the complete bundle. But for the purposes of this tutorial, we're just going to be working with this one specific style. But we still have the ability to customize it a little bit to make it look different, and I'll show you what I mean. So here, let's go ahead and change the size to about 102. And then we're going to also 
uh, change the tracking setting to about 40, just to space those letters out a little bit. Now I'm going to place this down here below the mug, all right, and give it a little bit of breathing room. You don't want it to be directly below the mug. And now over in our stroke panel, we want to come down here and add a weight of two. All right, but you can see that it automatically added a white stroke, which we don't want. So a quick fix for that is to simply click on the fill color and drag it behind onto the stroke so that you now have a black outline. And what that's going to do is make it look a little bit thicker, like more of a, a faux bold kind of type face. All right, so in this case, since we only have uh, the regular style to work with, we can kind of cheat it and make it look like it's bold. All right, so now let's press T once again and click below the word wired. And now we're going to type out the word CAFE in all caps. All right, and what we want to do here is sort of get that uh, accent mark on the E here. So the way to do that, let me just back up, is if you hold the Alt Option key and type E on the keyboard, and then let go of the Alt Option key and type E again. Now that you have that, you can just select that character, come over to the character panel and choose Show Options so you get some more options, and then just click on this double T down in the bottom left here to make it uppercase. Okay, so you now have the uppercase version of that with the accent mark there as well. All right, now for this text, let's make it about 51 points. We want it to be about half of the size. And we're also going to change the tracking now from 40 to 380, so it'll be much more spaced out, much wider like that. Okay, and now all we're going to do is press V on the keyboard to get our selection tool, click and drag around all three of these objects here, come over to the Align Tools, and we'll once again choose Horizontal Align Center, just to make sure that everything is nice and lined up. And that's looking pretty good. I think this is our, you know, I think our, our logo is just about ready. And I'm just going to select both of these copies of the text and maybe bump them down a little bit just to give a little bit of breathing room there. You don't want to have all of your, you know, objects feeling too crammed here. You want to just give it a little bit of space. Okay, and we can also probably make this just a touch smaller, maybe somewhere about there looks good. And then just nudge it down. And we now have our Wired Cafe logo. All right, so since we have a vector of this, let's go ahead and click and drag around all of it and press command Control g to group it together. You don't have to do that, but it just ensures that everything will stay uh, if you need to move it around or tweak it at all. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and save this Illustrator file, and then we'll jump over into Photoshop and begin working on our mockups. So now that we're over here in Photoshop, I'm going to go to the File menu and choose Open, or you can just click Open from the menu on the left here. Now we're going to go into the Freebies folder and then go inside this Essential Packaging Branding Mockup Mockup Zone folder, and we're going to choose the Front View 5 PSD. Now this is from a product in the Design Cuts Marketplace uh, where you guys can get a full uh, package of all of these different templates and items and objects that can be fully customized and it does come with a couple of complete scenes, uh, like the one that you see there. Okay, so now you see that we have a couple of layers, um, some folders here, all just stacked up, and each of these items is fully customizable. And the first thing I want to do actually is turn them all off, except for the very bottom layer, the Studio Raw layer. Now here you can see that we sort of just have this, you know, white and gray sort of background, um, but it has these angles on it that I actually want to get rid of. So the way that we're going to do that is by pressing M on the keyboard to get the rectangle tool. Click and drag a large selection around the background all the way over here to just before that angle hits. And now we're going to press Command Control J to duplicate that selection onto a new layer. Press Command Control T to do a free transform. And now I'm just going to drag this all the way over to the right side so that it fills the entire background and just kind of smooths it out. Now I'm going to double click that Studio Raw text in the layer, copy it, Hold Shift and select the layer one layer above that we just created. Press Command Control G to put it into a folder. Double click the group one text and paste that name in there so we now have a folder called Studio Raw. Now go ahead and turn on the Studio Color folder just above it. And then inside of here, we're going to turn off the visibility for both of those shapes. Instead, let's go ahead and add our own color here. So what we're gonna do first is come to the adjustment layer icon and add a solid color adjustment layer. And let's enter the hex value 9B7F65, which is this sort of tan color. Click OK, and change the blend mode to multiply. Come back down again, choose hue saturation. And this time we're just gonna move the saturation slider all the way to the left to negative 100 to desaturate it. Now come back down again, add a solid color adjustment layer. 
And this time, let's enter the hex value B8474F, which is more of this sort of nice red color here, a little bit of a desaturated red. And then click OK. And we'll also change the blending mode of this layer to multiply. Now, we're going to duplicate that layer by pressing Command Control J one more time, but we don't want it to be even darker. What we're going to do is change the blend mode now from multiply to linear dodge, and then press the number 2 on the keyboard to reduce the opacity to 20%. So now you can just go ahead and collapse that folder, and we've basically set up our background here. Now, I'm just going to turn these folders back on for a moment, and then press the letter C on the keyboard to get the crop tool. And move your cursor over either the left or the right side, or the handle, I should say, and then drag inwards while holding Alt Option on the keyboard to bring both sides in equally. And then we're going to press Enter or Return on the keyboard to apply that crop, just so that it'll help to keep the focus on the middle and center of the design, where all of our nice branded packaging will be. Now, one other thing you want to make sure to do here before we get too far into this is to actually come up to the File menu and choose Save As, uh, so that we can save this as a separate file and not save over the original mock-up. Alright, so I'm just going to go ahead and save this really quick. And I'll call it Wired Cafe Branded Packaging Design. And then just go ahead and save that before we go on. Now at this point, let's go ahead and turn off all of the packages except for the black coffee package here. And if I click on that small arrow and reveal the contents, you'll see that we just have a shadow and this smart object layer that says double click and edit. So let's go ahead and double click on that smart object and then you'll be seeing this black bag on a transparent background. Alright, so we now have this all by itself. Now from here we'll come down to where it says label design and that layer that is highlighted in red and then we'll also double click that to come into our main smart object where we'll be creating our design. So at this point we can come back over to Adobe Illustrator and we're going to click and drag around our logo, press command Control c to copy it, then press command Control and the Tab key on the keyboard to come back over to Photoshop, and press command Control v to paste it. And when you get this menu here, we want to make sure to choose Paste as Smart Object, and then click OK. Alright, so now I'm just going to scale this down a little bit while holding Alt, Option, and Shift on the keyboard to bring it in, and then press Return to apply the changes double click on the smart object layer and check off the color overlay option and apply a white color overlay. So just make sure you have solid white there. Click OK. Now duplicate the layer by pressing Command Control J. Double click on this top copy to change the color overlay from white to instead using the hex value DE535F. Alright, so that's a nice sort of light red color there. Click OK. Click OK again and you now have two copies of the logo right on top of each other. So let's customize this a little bit by pressing the letter M on the keyboard to get the rectangle tool, and I'm going to click and drag a selection just around this Wi-Fi signal on the top here. Now I want to add to that selection, so I'm going to hold the shift key and move my cursor over here to the uh, upper left of the word red, or just the letters R-E-D, and then click and drag around those as well. All right. So you now have both of these selected at the same time. And with that top smart object layer still selected, come down here to the bottom of the layers palette and choose the icon that says add layer mask. So we've now sort of isolated those two pieces uh, where we want the red to appear. And let's do the opposite on the white layer because sometimes, I'll just turn this on real quick to show you guys, sometimes if you have uh, two layers on top of each other, you might get a little bit of a white edge. I don't know if you guys can see that but you'll see a little bit of that white edge there, and if I turn that off, it looks much cleaner. Okay, so what we're going to do here is press M again on the keyboard, make sure that you now have the white layer selected, click and drag a selection around the cup, hold Shift, click and drag a selection around the W and the I, and then while still holding Shift, click and drag a selection around the word cafe. And if you miss a little piece of that accent mark there, just keep holding Shift and click and drag around that as well. And now go ahead and add a layer mask. Alright, so now you have the white portion of the logo and the red portion of the logo, both separated. Now I'm going to grab that red layer on the top. Maybe I can just call it red, call this one white, just so we can tell really quickly what each one is. And with the red one selected, duplicate it by pressing command Control j and then press command Control t to do a free transform. Now I'm going to hold the Alt option and Shift keys and drag out from any of the four corners of the bounding box to scale this way up. And then I'm just going to crop it so that the top curve of this Wi-Fi signal 
is in the lower right portion of the canvas here. And then go ahead and press Enter to apply those changes. Press Command Control J to duplicate that one more time, then Command Control T to do a free transform. And now let's scale this down a bit by dragging inwards while holding Alt, Option, and Shift. And this one I'm going to position somewhere over the, uh, the left side, maybe somewhere up here. Okay, and then press Return. And now let's double click on that layer and change the color overlay from that red color to instead maybe like a dark gray. Let's try 5F, 5F, 5F. Click OK. And as you'll see here, we can see the top of these letters, which we don't want. So I'm going to just make sure to select that layer mask, press M on the keyboard to get my rectangle tool, and then just click and drag around those letters on the bottom. And with a solid black foreground color selected, simply press Alt Option Delete to fill that layer mask with solid black. All right, so we now have the logo in the middle and we're using the Wi-Fi signal as sort of a nice pattern in the background. So let me go ahead and add a new layer at the top here. And I'm going to press T on the keyboard to get my type tool. But before I type anything out, let's just turn that color fill layer back on here uh, just to make things a little bit easier to see. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and click and type out freshly ground, then press return to come to a new line, Arabica beans. Press command control A to select the whole line and then command control shift and C to center the text. Get rid of that there. Press Command Control A once again. Come up to the window menu and open the character panel. All right, and then let's just undock that for a moment. And using the same typeface here, I want to reduce the size to maybe about 12 point. And then let's also bring in the line spacing quite a bit, just so it's not so spaced out. Maybe somewhere around 14 is looking pretty good. All right, and then we're going to nudge this over a little bit. Now from here, press the letter U on the keyboard. All right, and that's going to get us this uh, rectangle tool at the bottom here, the shape tool. And now up here in the top toolbar, make sure you have none for the fill color. Click on the stroke color, and then click on this icon in the upper right that shows this color spectrum up here. And that's going to allow us to either enter a hex value, or we can just sample this color from the bottom right to get that uh, reddish pink kind of color. All right, then go ahead and click OK. And now we're just going to click and drag out a box around the text here. All right, something like that. Go ahead and zoom in a little bit. All right, nudge it over just to make sure it's centered. And now we're going to select that top layer, hold shift and select the text layer below, and press command control J to duplicate it, and then hold the shift and the right arrow down on the keyboard just to slide that over until those lines meet in the middle. Now press T to get back to your type tool. Click inside this text box here. Press Command Control A to select all. And this time we're going to type out 100% naturally. Press return to come to a new line and type the word sourced. All right, so we now have these text boxes here. And what we can do is select the top one, select the bottom text layer here. Press Command Control G to put these layers into a group folder. Double click on it and maybe let's just call it subtext. Okay, so now you can see we have this sort of uh, nice hierarchy here going on, and I'm just going to center that below the logo, maybe nudge it down a little bit as well. Okay, and now just to keep it going, I'm going to select the two portions of the logo here that we want to separate. All right, so I'm going to select the red portion of the logo, hold shift and grab the white portion so we have the whole logo selected. Press Command Control G to put it into a group folder, and I'm going to call this logo text. Now press M on the keyboard to get your rectangle tool. Click and drag just around the text on the logo and then add a layer mask. Now duplicate that folder by pressing Command Control J. Hold the Control key, click on the layer mask of this new copy and delete the layer mask. And then let's go ahead and type out Wi-Fi mug for this folder. Press M and just select the mug with the Wi-Fi signal and then go ahead and add a layer mask to that. So we can now sort of manipulate the mug and the text separately and in this case, I'm just going to reduce the size of the mug a little bit more. All right, so at this point, I'm going to turn off that color fill layer and now press Command Control S to go ahead and save this smart object. And once it's finished saving, just press Command Control W to close the window and return to your mock-up. And you can see right here that this is looking pretty nice already. So let's go ahead and press Command Control S to save this and then return to our main mock-up. Okay, so here we go. We got this first package placed on our background. 
Let's continue moving on and turn on the next layer. So we now have the craft cartoon bag, which I'm going to expand and just reveal the smart object inside. It says double click and edit. So let's do just that. Now that we're inside of this second smart object layer down, the first thing I want to do is select this light layer right here and change the opacity from 60 to 40 just by pressing four on the keyboard. I want to tone that down a little bit. And now we can select this Your Design Smart Object layer and double click on it. So once you're inside here, you'll see that you just have some graphics that are laying here. And we're not going to be using those. So let's just go ahead and poke out the eyeball to turn off the visibility of that layer. Now I'm going to move this tab to the side. All right, move this one over as well. And I'll just kind of dock those two together. All right. And we're going to come back to our main mock-up here. So I'm just going to bring that tab down, move some of my panels out of the way. Maybe make that a little bit smaller so that we can essentially try to get the smart object from our original black bag. So let's go back in here into the black coffee package, double click on that smart object, double click the label design, and we can now pull some of these graphics in to this smart object and apply them to our brown bag. Okay, so now that we have these two things side by side, Let's come over here and just grab the Wi-Fi mug and drag and drop that into our new window while holding the shift key. All right, so we now have that in here. Let's press command control T, maybe scale it up a little bit from the center proportionally by holding alt option and shift as we drag outwards and then press return to apply the changes. Now what we're gonna do is come into this folder, double click on the red and we're gonna change this color slightly just so that it looks correct on the brown bag. So instead of using this hex value, let's go ahead and enter B, zero three six four zero and you can see that's a little bit darker and a little more saturated so then go ahead and click OK come to the white smart object layer and click on the effects icon while holding the control key and then choose clear layer styles so that's going to revert it back to black all right so now I'm going to select that red smart object layer press command control J to duplicate it and then press command control T to do a free transform and I'm now going to scale that up but you can see here it's kind of hidden because it's still inside of that Wi-Fi mug folder which has a mask on it. So we need to move this layer up one spot by pressing Command, Control, and the right bracket. Okay, now press Command, Control, T again, and we can continue editing this. Now press F to just change to full screen mode so we can get a better look at it. All right, and then I'm just going to scale this up even more. And again, sort of move this down here to the lower right corner and sort of use the curve of that Wi-Fi signal to just sort of crop and frame our logo in the middle. But this time, let's mix it up a little bit. I think I put it on the bottom right on the, the black bag. So instead, let's put this on the lower left. Then press Command Control J to duplicate that again. And let's move a copy up here to the upper right area. All right, zoom out a little bit. And let's just make this one a bit smaller just for variation. Okay. And now we can move the whole Wi-Fi mug down just a little bit to give our design a little bit of breathing room there. Okay, and then once we've done that, press F again to change the screen mode. And then press command Control s to save this smart object. And then command Control w to close out and return to the mock-up. Okay, so now you can see we've got our main icon here on the bag, along with some of those shapes from the Wi-Fi signal. Now, here we're going to press command Control s once again to save it and then command Control w to close this window and return to our main mock-up. All right, so let me close that. And now you can see that we have our second mock-up here in the scene. All right, so now let's continue moving on. I'm going to turn on the carton cup, come inside and double click on the smart object layer. And then once we're inside here, let's go into the Your Design smart object. And here you'll see that we have some flat artwork. So I do want to sample this gray color from the background, so press I to get the eyedropper, click anywhere on the background, add a new layer, and then press Alt Option Delete to fill it with that gray color. And now we can import some of those graphics again from our smart object here that we used on our first black bag. Now this time I'm going to come in here and I'm going to grab the both of the larger Wi-Fi icons along with the logo itself. And you don't have to bring in the subtext for this one, and I'm just going to click and drag that over here into this scene. Now press F to change your screen mode, command control T to do a free transform, and then command control zero to zoom out so that you can see the entire bounding box. And now I'm just going to scale that down while holding alt option and shift on the keyboard just so we can 
see what's happening here. All right, scale it up a little bit more. And then somewhere around here, we'll go ahead and press return on the keyboard to apply those changes. Okay, so here I wanna select the Wi-Fi mug and the logo text, press command control T to do a free transform. And I wanna make sure that that is nice and centered. Okay, go ahead and select the red copy of that larger Wi-Fi signal. And maybe just move it around slightly just so it looks a little bit different. Maybe you wanna scale it up and just nudge it to the right a bit more. Okay, and then turn on that top copy as well. And let's go ahead and make this one a little bit larger. And then move it down here just a bit. Right, somewhere around there. So again, that serves as a nice device to help sort of uh, frame our logo and draw the attention in towards the center. So now that we've set that up, let's go ahead and save that. And then once that's done, press Command Control W and then press F again to go to the full screen mode here for the cup. Now at this point, I wanna turn off this emboss layer. I don't think we, we really need that. And then I'm gonna come down here to the Your Design Smart Object once again, and I'm gonna unlink these two. Just click on that chain between the layer itself and the layer mask. And what we can do now is press Command Control T on the Smart Object layer, and there's a little bit of warping applied to this just to help make it look three dimensional. Um, but I felt that it's just a little bit too curved and warped, so I just want to modify that a little bit. So to do that, we're going to hold the control key and click on this and then choose warp. And now you'll see that there's already sort of a mesh on top here that we can manipulate a little bit. So the first thing we want to do is move both of these top handles in the corner just upwards a little bit, right, without making it completely straight. And then I'm going to move my cursor somewhere down here in the bottom middle uh, quadrant section all right and just move it up slightly just so that we can remove some of that uh, that curve there all right and just you know experiment with that for a moment or two maybe just push up a little bit more on the sides just so you can get a slightly more uh, straight on kind of shot and then just to hide this little bit of uh, gray down here just tap that layer down maybe one or two times and then click in between the layer and the layer mask to relink those two. Like that. Now from here, we can press Command Control S to save it, and then Command Control W to return to our main mockup. And if you zoom out, you can see how our scene is looking so far. All right, now let's move on to the Craft Coffee Pack, which is this nice side view of the bag here. Click on that arrow to reveal the contents, double click on that smart object inside, and then press F to, just to change your uh, screen mode here for a second so that you can see both of these windows side by side. I'm actually going to undock that one so I can see that in its own window. And I'm going to come back down here into the craft cartoon bag folder, come into that smart object. And what we're looking to do here is once again go inside the Your Design Smart Object. Uh, we want to sample that red color. So the easiest way to do that is to select this red shape, any of the red shapes in here, hold the control key and click on the small effects icon and then choose copy layer style. Okay, and now you can just close it. Press command control W, don't save. Command control W. Okay, and now we sort of have that color copied and we're going to apply it in the next step. So now, let's just move that over here. We're gonna come into the Smart object here that's about four layers down in the main label design folder. Double click that to enter this uh, window here where we can apply our graphics. Now, again, I still have this window open from the beginning when we created our black bag, and I'm gonna be using some of these graphics right here. So go ahead and select that subtext folder, and then hold the shift key and select all of the other folders below, um, pretty much everything except for that color fill layer, and then click and drag and drop these into the new window. Okay, now let's press F to change the screen mode so that we can see everything in here. And just press Command Control T to do a free transform and slide this down so that we can see what we're doing. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect off the bat. We just wanna make sure that we sort of get everything into view here. Okay, so the first thing I'm looking to do is turn off both of those larger Wi-Fi signals. I'm going to grab the logo text folder, hold shift and select the Wi-Fi mug press command control T, hold alt option and the shift key to scale it down from the center. Okay, and then just move it over a bit so it's in the middle. 
Okay, and then we can go ahead and select the subtext folder and drag that in as well while holding Alt, Option, and Shift just to scale it down and make it a bit smaller and then go ahead and center that as well. And we can maybe nudge this up a couple of clicks. And let's go ahead and turn on both of those larger Wi-Fi signal graphics. Now for this one, I'm going to slide it over. Somewhere about there looks pretty good. And now I'm going to use the rectangle tool to once again select this area on the bottom. Make sure that you select the layer mask and that you have a solid black foreground color and press Alt Option Delete to fill that and hide it. Now turn on the other copy and this time I'm going to maybe scale it up a little bit and slide it over just so you get more of that curve here on the bottom. Right, somewhere about there looks pretty good. So this time I think I want to maybe move some things around a little bit. Let's just go ahead and turn off that gray copy of the Wi-Fi signal and we'll grab both of these logo folders here and just slide them up towards the top. And now we'll grab that red copy of the Wi-Fi signal and move it over here towards the right side. Scale it down a little bit. Okay, and we're going to position it over the sort of the right middle portion of the bag here. All right, maybe about there looks pretty good. Nudge it down. And then I'm gonna grab the subtext folder, press Command Control T, and let's slide that towards the bottom here just so we can get a different layout. I, I know I kinda of had one layout before, but I just wanted to move things around and mix it up a little bit. Okay, so at this point, let's go ahead and expand those folders once again. And I'm gonna select the red layer in each of these folders by clicking on it, holding the Command Control key, and then clicking on the next one. So you should now have uh, all of those red layers selected. Let's just make sure. Okay, and now what we're gonna do is hold the Control key, click on any of those FX icons, and choose Paste Layer Style. And that's gonna go ahead and paste that red color that we had before. Now for all of the white, we're gonna select those two layers, hold the Control key, click the FX icon, and simply choose Clear Layer Style. All right, and that's gonna to revert to black. Now for the subtext folder, double click on it, choose color overlay, and then go ahead and apply a solid black fill. And once you've done that, press Command Control S to save this smart object, and then Command Control W to return to the previous window. All right, so you can now see how that's looking. It's looking pretty good, although it feels like it may be a little bit too large, this uh, logo on top, and a little bit too far to the right. It doesn't feel uh, perfectly centered, so I'm just gonna open that window and collapse the Wi-Fi mug folder and the logo text folder. Maybe nudge it over to the left a little bit and reduce it in size as well. All right, and then as soon as you save it, you'll see it update right here in this window. Okay, and I think that's looking a little bit better there. That feels more centered, more balanced, and everything's looking good. So we can now go ahead and close that. Okay, and let's go ahead and also close this window as well. Okay, just to kind of clean things up a little bit. Now, there's another smart object here where we can customize the side. You see where this uh, small cup is. So let's double click on that, move this tab to the side here. And for this, I'm actually just going to grab the cup icon, the, the mug, the Wi-Fi mug from the top here. So I'm gonna come back in here to the front of that label, grab the Wi-Fi mug, drag it into here, press Command Control T to do a free transform. And I'm just going to center it and position it on the bottom and turn off the visibility of that other layer because we don't need it. Now press Command Control S to save it. You can close this other window here and you can see that that is now updated. But I'm just being a little picky here. I want the bottom of that cup to kind of line up with the bottom of our subtext. So just come back in this window, maybe move it up a couple of clicks, press Command Control S to save it and just watch it update. So once you're happy with the way that this bag is looking and I think it's looking pretty cool, we're gonna press Command Control S to save it and then Command Control W to close the window and return to our main mockup. All right, so there you have it, guys. We now have our custom branded packaging for the Wired Cafe that we created using a combination of Illustrator and Photoshop. Now, when you use these two programs together, you can do a lot of things. And in this tutorial, you've seen just one way that you can use them together uh, to create some cool visual branding. And the nice thing about this, too, is that you can see how quickly you can go from just developing a logo to building it out a little bit, you know, using certain colors, uh, using some of the graphics in certain ways to help frame our logo, 
and it just helps create more of a, a brand identity system, right? So you're building it out so that it's much more than just a logo. You're now sort of evoking feelings and applying it to packaging, which looks really nice, really clean, iconic, and professional. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed this tutorial and hopefully learned a few new tips and tricks along the way. As always, we would love to see what you guys do with these tips and techniques and resources in your own work. And be sure to go ahead and check out the complete eclectic font collection. Again, as we created this design today, I know that we only used one single style of one font, but again, this collection is just a massive library of typefaces that you guys will be able to use for literally any kind of project and it'll save you tons of time and money so you won't have to spend your time searching for the perfect font. So thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Eric Vasquez, here with Design Cuts, and we'll see you next time.